Chris is first up tonight. All these years, I have been pretending to be blind. <laughs> <laughs> if only, Lee, would you read that for me, please? <laughs> Every night, I use an unusual technique to make sure I wake up on time in the morning. Ooh. Oh. Right, David's team. OK, oh. so what is the unusual technique? The, the usual way of um, making sure you wake up in the morning at the right time would be to set an alarm clock. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've heard of that. Mm. OK. So. So, so, and you do something different. Well, we don't need to know what. I think <laughs> it will go true. <laughs> what I've done is I have... Trained my brain to wake itself up. No, you haven't. At the right time. <laughs> by, by doing what? When I'm lying in bed, I will bang out the time on the pillow with right. my head. Right. Saying the hours for the time that I want to wake up. Yeah. And that uh, Chris. subconsciously programs the time. Chris. Yes. Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> And how accurate is this? 50-50. <laughs> Where did this idea come to you from? I, I, I read it in a book. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the book? The book was called Last Man Standing. It was a fictional book, David. It was a fictional book from which you were taking lifestyle tips. <laughs> Well, do you know when you read something and it sticks in your head as an idea to try? This may help you, David. Give us a, a demonstration, if you would, of the d severity of the head bang. You're settling down at the okay. end of the night. OK, Lee, I'm going to turn around a bit and use you as a pillow. All right. Oh, so I'm I in put bed. Put my arm there, yeah. Oh, my, my pillow's firmer than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to get up at 7.30 in the morning, so yeah. I'm like, I go, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. And if I want to get up at 7.30, I go, 7.30. And, <laughs> 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 um, Chris, I, I don't know whether you've got a partner or, or a wife or somebody who shares he the He used to have a wife. He headbutted us to death. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody else in the bed with you, Chris? Um, so, I, I, I mean, I, I tour a lot. Um, so, so, some I, nights, yes, yes, some nights, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tour a lot, I'm away a lot, um, but when I'm at home, I do have a wife. I mean, I have a wife all the time. <laughs> but... <laughs> what are you thinking, David's team? Alex, what do you think? Oh, it's so unbelievable, it's believable. Yeah, and also, I do think that if you tell yourself you need to wake up at a certain time, the chances of waking up then are, are higher than you'd think. It's not totally random. Well, let's or... give it a go tonight. Yeah. 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 I Ooh, you make it sound as if you're sharing a bed. <laughs> 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 so I think you're saying it's true. What? Are we happy to say true? Oh. Yeah, I think we're going to go with true. OK, Chris, they think you were telling the truth, were you? Or was it a lie? Everyone will be trying it tonight. It's true. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Gina, you're next. <clears throat> I once faked a school trip to fool my mum into letting me go to France. <laughs> David's team. So you faked a school trip? Faked a school trip. What, how? What did you say? Uh, my mother was extremely strict. Mm -hmm. Never let me go anywhere or do anything. I was 17. I wanted to go to France. I was studying A-level French. So I, I tricked her into thinking it was <laughs> imperative for me to go on this trip. I'd have thought if it was an educational thing, most mums would be all for it, wouldn't they? That's the point she's just made. No. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was super overprotective of us. Right. Like, she didn't let us go anywhere. She had a scrapbook of bus and train crashes. <laughs> <laughs> that she'd bring out and go, you see these children? They went on their school trip and now they are dead. <laughs> Stuff like that. Wow. Was there actually a school trip? No, there was no school trip. I went on my own. But so, what, I... did you just tell your very strict, fearful of death mother, this is school trip? And she went, OK, there's a school trip. I basically got all my friends to turn up at the train station with suitcases. <laughs> You're not serious. To make it look like it was a school trip. And they weren't going to France with you? No. And then wow. my mum came, said goodbye, <laughs> and then we all got on the train and they got off at the next stop. <laughs> Where did you go in France? 
I went to um, Touraine. Tu Touraine. Touraine which Why is did you go to Touraine? Because there was a French course there, and the council gave free trips for kids who were studying A levels. So you actually lied to your mum to go to France, but actually went to a French course. Yeah. So you didn't go clubbing or go out and do anything. You I actually did that. went and studied. I did that. I slept with a guy while I was there, but I did go. <laughs> But you also Initially did to a... study. So it was wow. part fun, part academic. Yeah. What year was this? I'm going to say the 80s. Because I was there in the 80s. Yeah. 80s, yeah. So how long was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's me! <laughs> wow! I remember you. <laughs> I thought you were black. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, Ronish? The way that Gina talks about her mum is the same way that I sort of, you know, Sri Lankan parenting is very, very similar. What I can't understand is how you wouldn't be just incredibly anxious, because if even there was the slimmest chance of your mum finding out, you would not be with us today. <laughs> no. What do you think, Jessica? I think it's a completely 100 percent true. Really? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, completely. David? Do you know what I liked? Terrain. Not Paris. No. It's not obvious, is it? Turin. Who knows? But yes, that's a sort of thing. A place in France. Yes, my town is twinned with Turin. They've got a biscuit <laughs> factory. <laughs> okay, I think it's true. You're going to say true. <gasps> Gina, Gina, uh, truth or lie? It is true. <laughs> Abby, your turn. Age 11, I got my first ever detention for secretly watching Would I Lie To You on my phone in class. Oh. oh. Well, that makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Can we ask how old you are now? Uh, I'm 20. So, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, this programme was on nine years ago. Yes. I can confirm that. So, uh It's a family-friendly show. Family-friendly show. Um... <laughs> 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 what lesson were you in? I was in RE. How many times had you done this? I'd done it, like, quite a few times before. Watching so us or just watching telly generally? Mainly would I lie to you. Here's a question, then. Who was on? <laughs> <laughs> OK, David was on. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> you were on as well. Yeah, that's how I mean, yeah. Yeah, so, Rob yeah. was on, yeah. yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> Um, I think it was one of the episodes with Bob Mortimer. Oh, you're playing safe. Oh, that's, yeah. e that's a very easy yeah. choice, isn't it? <laughs> so, you know when you was watching this, was you streaming it or did you buy the box set? Uh, I was just streaming it. You wouldn't have that much data. How much data did you have? You can download... Nine years ago. <laughs> you used to get one gigabyte nine years ago. I downloaded it. 300 megabytes per episode. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's very specific knowledge. Yeah, yeah man. I, I used to work at the Apple store. Uh, I see. <laughs> Um, do you remember what you were supposed to be studying in RE that day? Uh, there was a there's a lot of religions. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Hinduism. Okay. I mean, much as I find the show entertaining, I don't know if it's more entertaining than Hinduism. <laughs> <laughs> That's our second trailer from Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're saying? What did you think? A lie? <laughs> I'm going for a lie. I don't think she would have been allowed her phone. Lie. Lucy. I think it's a lie. I'll go with my team. It might be true. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with We've it. never done this before, but can I have a substitute? <laughs> Let, let's go with lie. OK, we'll go with lie. Lie, lie, lie. OK, they think it's a lie. Abby, was it a lie? Or was it actually the truth? It was... a lie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's Charlie. Oh, um, uh, I was 40 before I realised that raisins are, in fact, grapes. <laughs> Please, T. How old are you now? 52. Right, how did you find out? Well, somebody told me. Oh, it's a hell of an anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> you got any more? <laughs> I was eating, like, you know you can get a pack of, like, assorted... Nuts and uh, raisins. Nuts, chocolate things. Yeah. And I was with my wife, and I said, what, what are raisins? <laughs> what wow. are they? It never occurred to me before. And then she told me they're grapes, and I, did, I didn't believe her. 
So what did you think they were? I thought they were raisins. <laughs> <laughs> and you just thought that they grew like that? There isn't a clue in the way there is with, say, sun-dried tomato. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What about gherkins? Do you know where gherkins come from? They're cucumbers. Don't call me an idiot. <laughs> I mean... Uh, what about currants, Charlie? Currants, those are a, a... They're a grape too? I think... No, I'll be honest with you, I'm only 90% sure. I think a currant is a grape as well, isn't it? <laughs> That's what I oh, would say. Oh, sorry, hang on a minute, who's the idiot here? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you hypocrite! <laughs> I'm loving this new guess where dried yeah. fruit came from section of the show. <laughs> what about sultanas? Sultanas, I know what they are. They're white grapes. White grapes? Yeah. <laughs> so the currant could be a dried black currant, couldn't it be? Maybe? But hang Ooh, on a minute, like, possible. literally you were all ganging up on I me. I wasn't. <laughs> I backed you up. I mm. said sun-dried tomatoes, it would have been obvious, but it's not obvious with a raisin. And now okay. it's a current affairs show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think, Hannah? I think it's true. I think even very, very smart people can be a bit unobservant sometimes. True. And I think... But what about Charlie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Danny? I think it's false. You don't think it's true because... Because you can't have waited that long to ask that question. When you say you were 40. Well, when did you ask what they were? When my son asked me and I had to go and Google it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what's it going to be, Lee? We'll say it's true. Yeah, go, on. Yeah. go on, we'll say true. OK, they're saying true. Charlie, truth or lie? It is, uh true. Yes! <laughs> well done. <laughs> Craig is first up tonight. I once made a 72-hour round trip to Australia just to pick up a really rare record because I couldn't risk it getting damaged in the post. <laughs> These two. Wow. What was the record? 100-metre sprint? <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a rare Northern Soul record. By? Uh, Frank Wilson. And what was the record called? It was called Do I Love You, Indeed I Do. It was originally printed and they were, all 500 presses were smashed because uh, Motown didn't like it. But two survived, well, two knowingly survived. We thought we'd find a third one. Is it a single or an album? It's a seven-inch. Sorry, but the, the, flying all that way for a seven-inch doesn't seem like a very good use of... <laughs> <laughs> Of time or money. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the one that we know of, that I know of, sold for £28,000, so it's quite... A... And how much were you paying for it? Well, we thought we could get it for about nine grand. Where did you get it? Was it from eBay or something? No, it was just from some, some research. And people, someone phoned up and said he thinks she's got a copy of it in Melbourne, Australia. OK. So I went over on, on, on Qantas. So when you got there, did the third one exist? It did exist, yeah, but it was in such a bad state. It was like someone had glued it back together. So you couldn't play it? No, you couldn't play it, no. Craig, could you do a bit of the song? Do I love you? Do I love you? Do I oh, it was scratched, wasn't it? Presume you'd have been expected, if you'd have brought it back, expected to pay import duty? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> you might not have been expected it, but I suspect they were. <laughs> Jeremy, what do you think? just seems so impractical to fly that distance and pay that amount of money to buy something. So I'm, I'm edging towards lie here. Did you offer him anything? I did offer him uh, £5,000. And he said no. And I brought it home. Oh! Oh, you did buy you, it? So yeah, you've got yeah. it now, have you? Yeah. This now sounds true. I think it's true. Yeah, yeah, well, I think he's well known for his love of music, so he might be mad enough to do that. We'll say it's true. Saying it's true. They think it's true, Craig. Was it true or were you telling us a lie? I was telling you... A lie. Oh! <laughs>